Anybody feeling just a little overwhelmed? And it's okay if you do. When I first showed up to NSA, that was my feeling every time. That it's like, what? This is amazing. And it's like, could I ever be one of them? You see the Ty Bennett's of the world, or, or Sidney Jakes, or uh, these people who seem to have it all together, and it's like, ah, uh, I'm not that yet. Okay, let's handle that right up front, shall we? I'm a psychologist, so we can talk. I had that same experience again just a few weeks ago as I attended the, the National Winter Conference in San Francisco. And I got such a download, such a downpour of information that I wasn't sure what to do with all of it. It's like holding a Dixie cup under a waterfall. Can you relate to that? And then I figured out, I'm only responsible for my Dixie cup. So whatever you catch in your little Dixie cup today, that's yours. And everything else there's time for eventually or when it's appropriate. So that feeling of overwhelm that you might experience just indicates that there's a whole lot of room for growth and potential and possibilities. And that will always be true. Is that true, Ty? You still got room to grow? And all of the Hall of Fame speakers that I know would tell you that. We've got three in our chapter right now. So wherever you are is perfect. Now, let's put this into a context, because getting paid to speak is why we all showed up here today. It's not about the money, and it's not about you. Why should you get paid to speak when you love this topic and you would do it for free and you feel like it's a mission to you? Anybody feel that way about your topic? I know you do because I've interviewed a bunch of you. You would do this for free. I told one of my clients recently, you're not paying me to do this. I love this. You're paying me to be away from my family for a little while to do this. And for me, that brings in the context because getting paid to speak becomes the economic engine for your mission, for what it is that you do. Three little thoughts about that. And I had no idea what I wanted to share with you here today because I didn't know what all of the content would be today. And as I was sitting here listening to Ty and we're wrapping up a full day of some powerful content, it occurred to me that it's important to have the context. You have power. Connect with that for a moment. One of my friends and mentors, Dan Clark, who is a Hall of Fame speaker, once said, in the words that I remember, I don't know if he said these words, these are the ones I remember. Have you had that experience before? He said, speakers change lives. I want to modify that because I know for a fact that speakers save lives. If that feels heavy to you, at the very other end of that is that speakers enhance lives and it's our business to go out there and elevate the quality of life for humankind. And you do it differently than I do. Notice that you have power. And under your word, lives change. What that means is that we all have a moral obligation to do this. Now, also connect with the fact that you're passionate about this. Well, that's not an accident, folks. That's all part of the context, and there's reasons why you feel called to this particular aspect of this greater mission that I think we all share, and that is to elevate the quality of life for humankind, for our, our brothers and sisters that share this planet with us. You have power, 
I think it's important to understand that. Second, you have purpose. And no, it's not an accident that I'm picking P words, for those of you who know me. You have purpose. Connecting with that purpose and getting really clear about what your particular purpose is is I think one of the first and most fundamental steps of not only getting paid to speak, but of changing the world in a way that you uniquely can do that. Connect with that purpose. Figure out what it is. If you're sitting there thinking, I don't know what my purpose is. I just know that I'm fired up about this stuff. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And that's your, your current place. Which is the third point that I was thinking I wanted to make. You have a place. And the place where you are right now is the perfect place for you to be right now. You're right on schedule. Scott's smiling. We talked about that earlier. You're right on schedule. Folks, as a professional psychologist, what you think matters. It matters a whole lot. And you can think, oh, I'm not there yet. Oh, I'm not doing well enough. I'm behind. You'll feel that way sometimes. That's what overwhelmed is all about. What if we could all be perfectly whelmed? That would be sweet, right? Do you know for sure that you're behind schedule? I know that's your opinion. Do you know that for sure? Like you've got some cosmic connection to the calendar or schedule and you know that you're behind. You don't. You don't know that. Well, do you know for sure that you're right on schedule? No. You said yes. That's an opinion. <laughs> you don't know either way. Pick a position. Pick something that serves you well, because this changes your brain. How many of you were here for Scott Halford, who visited our chapter? If you were, you learned about how your brain operates. If you weren't here, go into the archives and listen, because he taught us something very powerful, and that is that your thoughts change your brain. It literally, physiologically and chemically, changes the tool that you bring to the party. And when you think, I'm not doing this very well. I'm not on schedule. I'm behind. I'm so inadequate. When you think that, which is an opinion, by the way, <laughs> it triggers a little shot of cortisol into your central nervous system. That has the effect of redirecting the blood flow from your prefrontal area of your brain, which is the part that's in charge of logic, reason, problem solving, compassion, empathy, shoots it down to the basement in a place that we call the limbic system, which is in charge of the fight or flight response. Your brain literally is working against you now because you're in survival mode. If you think, conversely, I'm right on schedule. In fact, say that. Will you just humor me? Say it out loud. I'm right on schedule. Say it with a lilt to your voice. Raise your eyebrows just a little bit. I'm right on schedule. How does that feel? It feels awesome because it gives you a little squirt of dopamine. Whole different chemical. Dopamine has the effect of activating the prefrontal part of your brain. It doesn't solve anything. What it does is it puts you in position to solve anything. Does that sound important? And by your thoughts, you will bring a whole different tool to the party. You have power. What you do matters. It changes and saves lives. And I think one of the reasons you're all here is because you know that. Number two, you have purpose. There's a reason you feel drawn to whatever your topic is, whatever your audience is. And your tribe is your tribe, and it's not my tribe. So go serve your tribe. Okay? You have power, you have purpose, and you have a place. And your place is perfect. It's perfect for you. You're right on schedule. 
than getting paid to speak. It's not about the money. It's about the economic engine for your mission. And it would not be right. It would not be moral. It would not be correct to withhold that, to withhold that gift from those whose lives are changed because you show up. And if you don't bring it, they don't get it. It's that important. You guys are so amazing. Thank you for being here, for contributing to the energy and the culture and the spirit of this meeting today. Thank you. Did you get some value today?